Welcome to Spotlight Matthew for today as we deal with one of the most challenging of passages in the Gospel of Matthew. It has to do with Judas, the betrayer, the son of perdition, and his decision to commit suicide. As we know with Judas, he is one of the twelve. He was the keeper of the finances, the treasure, if you will, among the disciples with Jesus and he has identified himself as the one who would hand over Jesus to suffering and to death. And there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he brings the temple guard and betrays Jesus with a kiss. And so now we pick up the story about Judas as we look at Jesus and him being delivered over to Pilate at the very same time Judas is taking his final actions here on the face of the earth in his sorry life as it comes to an end. So let's pick up with Matthew chapter 27 verse 1. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas his betrayer saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver said, it is unlawful to put them in the treasury since this is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what the prophet had spoken, the prophet Jeremiah saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave it to them for a potter's field as the Lord directed me." Well, I think in our Christian life it's good for us to attempt to be as generous as we can with people who have done wrong. Certainly we would ask that the Lord and others would be generous with us when we commit wrongs, when we sin and fall short of his glory. And therefore that which I am presenting is, in my mind, the most generous picture I can think of concerning Judas. Judas, for whom it is understandably easy to have words of censure and quick condemnation. What we find in the passage here is that Judas finds himself with a change of mind and he approaches the chief priests. We, we don't know exactly why he did so, but his mind is changed and he recognizes that he has committed sin and innocent blood is on his hands. He wants to return the 30 pieces of silver. What prompted this change of mind? And here is the generous reading from my way of thinking. I think that it's possible that Judas thought that the betrayal would be a case in which the religious leaders would apprehend Jesus, they would lecture him, they would rough him up, they'd give him a good threatening, they would censure him in some way, shape, or form. But I do think it is possible for us at least to consider that Judas did not have in his mind that their intention was nothing less than putting Jesus to death on a Roman cross. And perhaps he comes to his senses and realizes that this individual who he has followed for these three years is going to die, something that Judas did not anticipate, even though naively so, he should have anticipated it. But maybe that is what the case is. He sees where this path is taking Jesus, and it's not the path that, Je that Judas had hoped would materialize by betraying Jesus over to the religious leaders and eventually over to the Roman procurator. So that is just a speculation, but something for you to think about. We don't really know, but it is possible that Judas just did not see the consequences coming that he was initiating. And so he attempts to reverse it or to distance himself from it, but it is far too late. We know that Pilate soon will wash his hands trying to uh, absolve himself from what the crowds are demanding in taking uh, Barabbas instead of Jesus. Well, this is Judas' attempt to wash his own hands, figuratively speaking, by returning the 30 pieces of silver. 
Well, when this does not succeed, Judas becomes his own judge and jury, his own sentencer and his own executor as he commits suicide. Indeed, Jesus, says, Jesus has said in chapter 26, verse 24, it would have been better for that man had he not been born. And Judas comes to a point of realizing it would be better for him in his mind that he not continue to live. Well, I want to mention a few things that I actually think Judas does right in this passage. I know that's, that's a hard way to come at anything having to do with Judas, but I do think there are some things that are positives for him here. First of all, I think that Judas seems legitimately, from what I can tell from this passage, to have a sense of true guilt. And he seems to be convicted that he has committed sin. At least he confesses that he is uh, guilty of committing sin and innocent blood is upon him. He attempts to make that confession to those who would be his priests or his pastors. That should have been the role of the high priest and the high priest in Israel. They were the pastors of Israel. They let him down horribly, however, by saying, that's uh, not our business, that's yours. You just go off and do whatever it is you need to do. We see that Judas then hurls the blood money into the temple, uh, an attempt to give it back or to divorce himself from any kind of gain or merit as symbolized by the pieces of silver that he was benefiting from betraying Jesus. That is something I think positive to be said. I think that we could contend that, uh, that Judas gets to a point of remorse concerning what he has done. We don't know, but it is entirely possible that Jesus' words, it would have been better had that person never been born uh, than do what he is about to do, were ringing in his mind now that he has come under this sense of remorse and conviction about the evil that he has done. We don't know that. Now, the thing that comes after this is, does, does Judas repent? All of this is contrition, but none of it is true repentance. Was there a point before Judas hanged himself that he asked for mercy and the forgiveness of God, and yet in despair went ahead with the deed of killing himself? Scripture is silent. It does not report that. It only reports remorse. It does not report true repentance. And indeed, we might say concerning Judas that he needed to move beyond remorse to that repentance that truly sought God for forgiveness and for mercy. He needed to move to a point of trying to get to Jesus or at least the disciples to seek their forgiveness and to confess to them as the primary ones who had been offended against. But he doesn't do that. He would then, after that, seek to receive this forgiveness and move into a new way of life, but instead he chooses suicide. I think there's a difference between being remorseful for something that one has done and being repentant from it. I think we see in Judas true remorse. I think we can give him that benefit from this passage, but I don't think we can go so far as to know at least whether there was repentance. It is not indicated and we must leave that to the justice and mercy of God. But we can say for sure that his decision to take his own life was the wrong path to follow. And that is something that uh, our faith needs to emphasize. Can we have compassion on those who take their lives? Absolutely. Can we have sorrow over their taking their lives? To be sure. But in no way can we justify or in some way approve of that option being taken by someone, especially in this day and age in American culture, where suicide is increasingly being accepted as an option that is honorable and to be uh, recognized and affirmed by our culture. Now, our, our Christian faith has nothing of that. We can have compassion, we can have sympathy, we can have empathy, but we cannot have approval of this act that Judas takes. We need to draw the line at that point. Tough subject, tough passage, but hopefully one where we can benefit in our own lives. Thanks for listening to this look at the last hours of Judas's life. Spotlight Matthew, thanks so much. Check us out, spotlightgoodnews.com. We'll talk to you next time.